in this session. I would like to talk about strategies and procedures. Many students actually confuse, actually some scholars even, confuse uh, matters between what is a procedure, what is a, a, a strategy in translation. And uh, they are not actually familiar which one is which. So we need to look at them from the point of view of Vinay and Darbelnet, 1995. Of course, Vinay and Darbelnet, uh, they have split uh, the strategies into two parts. Uh, they have two types of strategies, direct translation and oblique translation. And direct translation, of course, it's actually relating to the fact that of uh, actually directly looking at the meaning and translating something without looking at any connotative meaning to the words or to the phrases and that. And that is what direct. Oblique is not very clear. When you are translating it directly, it is not clear and it's not acceptable. That's why it's called oblique. And it's one of the reasons why they have actually chosen it to be oblique uh, as opposed to being direct. So let's have a look and now and see what is direct uh, translation as opposed to uh, oblique translation. Of course, you go for the direct translation, which means the first uh, uh, procedure, so direct translation is the actual strategy, and borrowing is the procedure. And borrowing is, it means that the SL word is directly transferred to the TL1. It is a form of transliteration. Here is an example. For example, computer is written computer, Algebra means algebra. Then calc, which is a form of borrowing, transferring again the SL expression or structure in a literal uh, translation. In other words, it's actually in, it is actually, uh, it is still as it is, you translate it word for word, uh, what it says there, uh, regardless of what it means in the TT. So you are basically focusing on the ST more than the TT uh, in terms of the meaning related. So you are focusing on the way it is expressed in the ST and following that in the TT. That's called calc. The third uh, procedure is literal translation, which is translating it word for word. This kind of translation is very common between languages, especially if they are from the same language, same family and culture. That is like French and um, French and English, for example, or French and Latin or Spanish. Um, uh, but literalness, it, uh, it is sacrificed because of um, structural and metalinguistic requirements after checking meaning is fully transferred. And that is according to what uh, Vinay and Dobelnet has done in, on page 89 in uh, Monday 2018. Literalness is unacceptable for grammatical reasons or for syntactical reasons or for grammatical reasons or for pragmatic reasons as well. Of course, that's why you go for oblique translation, indirect translation. And that's when you use procedures like transposition, which is the change of word class, without changing the sense. Here's an example, changing it from noun to verb or from adverb to verb. For example, this phrase, upon her rising, you can translate it as hala nuhudiha, which means you keep to the same structure, or you say hala ma which is changing the structure. So either ways is acceptable. Another form of a procedure is called modulation which is changing the point of view, i.e., and there are two types of this, obligatory or optional, i.e., you either force to use it or modulation or optional. Examples. It is easy, minasal, and you can say, laysa minasab. It's not difficult. So modulation is used when it is grammatically correct, but it is awkward in the TT and unsuitable and unidiomatic in the TL. That's why you resort to modulation. And also modulation, um, changing from hyponym to a superordinate, like she drove a Mercedes, okay, and it is translated into qadat sayyara, or qadat is sayyara, uh, or uh, he broke his crown, and you translate it as he broke his tooth, kasara, kusirat sinno. And watch here that we have changed the passive into active, 
uh, uh, in the TT. In the ST, it was um, uh, active and it's become passive in the TT. Kusirat sinnuhu. Another example of modulation, abstract noun, you've translated into a concrete one, as in honesty, al asidq he's an honest man, and he translated as an honest man, rajulun sadiq. Or you can change from passive to active, as we have seen, the, the book is read by Ahmad, or Ahmad read, read the book. يعني ترجمة قرأ أحمد الكتاب بدل ما قرأ الكتاب من قبل أحمد. I don't like من قبل. Again, effect and cause. You change, you translate the effect into a cause. He broke his crown. You translate it. He fell down. That's why he broke his crown. Or finally, part to hold. Like for example, you say Damascus said. What do you mean? The Syrian government said. Again, uh, in equivalence, which is a third um, uh, part, uh, after we have finished with the first two, uh, uh, and the third part is equivalence, which is idiomatic translation, translating an SL idiom into a TL idiom. Here is an example. A bull in a china shop. يَتَصَرَّفُ مِثْلَ ثَوْرٍ أَهْوَجٍ يَتَصَرَّفُ بِكُلْ You know, you can say that as well. أَهُوَ أَحْمَقٍ of course, we didn't really translate it into an idiom in the TL here. We are more using it as a functional kind of translation, half functional and half cultural. So because you are saying the bull again, and it is ahwaj which you created from your own in the target language, uh, which means a clumsy bull. And there is also, you can, in the equivalence, uh, translating noun into a verb or adverb into a verb, and there is here hala uh, nuhudiya, and, and uh, which is translated as hala manahabat. In adaptation, I mean, of course, here uh, you've seen it earlier. We've seen that earlier when we change uh, the form of uh, phrase into a clause, uh, translating it. But let's move on to the next part anyway, to the adaptation here, which is changing the cultural reference as it does not exist in the target language or target culture. For example, cricket. How would you translate it into the target language? You don't have anything equivalent to that. Maybe you can say du Tour de France as opposed to what cricket is because it's well known in Tour de France is Sibak al-Darajat fi Faransa whereas cricket is also another game. So you are adapting it to the culture. In the uh, cricket, which is the British culture, and Tour de France, it is in the target culture. And that way, we can actually then summarize what we have been uh, talking about in terms of uh, 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 procedures and uh, strategies. We, as I said before, that there are two strategies that we are following here, according to Vinay and Darbenet, and the two strategies are direct translation, and oblique translation. And in direct translation, we have borrowing, which is you just borrow the same words, like mufotar, uh, computer, um, all of these words that you are just transliterating them, more or less. And then you have, that's called borrowing, and then you've got calc, which is you're translating the term as is in the source text without rephrasing it in uh, the target text in another way, i.e. you just translating it word for word. That's called calc. And then the third one, which is literal translation, you are translating the same language between two, uh, the same two languages which are close to each other. And that literalness is also acceptable. But sometimes it becomes very awkward. When it's awkward or unsuitable and that, you think of oblique translation. And there are four procedures. So we've seen three procedures under the t direct translation and, th and four under the oblique, which is transposition, where you are actually uh, changing it from noun to verb, from adverb to, as we've seen, hala nuhudiha, and, and the other one. And then modulation, where you are actually saying minasal or laysa minasab. So you're changing the point of view here. Um, uh, when, and of course, modulation is you have to actually look at something that is make it not awkward. And when in modulation, you can change from hyponym to 
uh, superordinate, as we've seen, Mercedes into trans, uh, to Sayara and Crown into, يعني بدل ما نقول كسرة طاحونته قلنا كسرة سنه أو كسرة سنه. And also abstract to uh, concrete or passive to active or effect to cause and part to the whole. And in equivalence, of course, as we have seen, it's idiomatic where you're talking about the bull, as we've seen it earlier, and, and I think I have to correct here myself, because idiom to an idiom. A bull in a china shop, okay? ثورن أهوج, ممكن we can say that. Yeah, in Arabic, it's actually idiomatic a little bit. So that's what equivalence is. You find an equivalent, an, an idiom to an idiom, and that's what you are doing here when you are actually translating it, and that's what's called equivalence. And I apologize for saying earlier when I said about noun to verb and verb to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, adverb to verb, and that is to do with modulation, and it has nothing to do with any uh, to do with the equivalence. So it's not my apologies. Finally, we have uh, the last one, which is adaptation, where you are adapting it to the target culture by saying, instead of cricket, you say Tour de France. Thank you very much.